Hi and welcome to this video tutorial. In today's video I'm going to teach you how to build a one-to-many relationship inside Caspio. Let's take a look at a demo application first so that you can see exactly what we're going to be building today. I have a contact management application deployed and I'm going to go ahead and log in as a sample user. In this case we have John. And as soon as John logs in he's able to search all the contacts. He's able to see all the results and if he wants to drill down to details of each contact, I can click on the details link. And inside a details view, I can edit Mary's information. And on the right side, I can submit comments and logs in your typical CRM exactly to see what's happening with the account. So for instance, if I su submit something like this, something on those lines and once I click submit that comment or that log will be stored directly in my comment section and this concept of having many contacts and many comments pertaining to each contact is referred to as a one-to-many relationship uh, this type of a workflow can be applied to many other types of applications if you're building a CRM system task manager project manager just note that you can apply the same concept and the same workflow to those types of applications as well before I show you how this uh, workflow is created inside Caspio, I have a diagram that illustrates exactly what's taking place in this uh, specific concept here. What we're going to need is we're going to need two web pages. We have a results.html page and we also have a details.html page. And for this application to function, we're also going to need four data pages where we have one data page deployed on this web page and we have three data pages deployed on our details page. And what's linking all of these data pages together is a unique customer ID. So from the results page, what we're going to do is we're going to pass that customer ID to the details view. And in the details view, all three of these data pages are going to receive this customer ID. If you get stuck along the way in the video, feel free to refer back to this diagram at any time. If you need a refresher and you can see exactly how something was done. So again, let me go back to my website again and illustrate and show you exactly what's taking place. So notice I have this search and results data page deployed on my results.html page. And when I click on this details link, it's going to pass. If you notice in the bottom left hand corner of my screen, once I roll over the hyperlink, you'll notice customer ID 1, customer ID 2, 3, so on and so forth. And when you click on that details link, you're going to pass that customer ID to the details page. You can see that customer ID. And all three of these data pages deployed on details page are receiving this customer ID. And that's why we're able to filter all the results pertaining to Mary's account. Okay, so now let's log inside our Caspio account and let's take a look and see how this workflow was built. I already have my application created, so I'm going to go ahead and click on open. I'm going to go directly to my tables. In this specific application, we have three tables built. My first table is the user table. Let's click on the design mode. And notice the fields that I have. I have user ID, which is auto number, set to unique. I have the name of the employee. I have their email address, which is also unique. And the reason why is because we can't have the same username twice per password and then I have a password field data type for this specific field. On my second table, which is the contacts table, the important field that you'll need here is that field for customer ID, or you can name that whatever you want. Make sure you have it set as an auto number and make sure that it's unique because this field is going to be linking all four of those data pages. And then list all the other fields that pertain to your contacts. And last but not least, we have the comments table. In the comments table, we have the submitted by field, which is going to be for our users because I want to stamp the employee's name, whoever made that log. I also have date submitted for that uh, particular log. I also have customer ID, which is the same field name as my other table to help me remember that those, uh, these two tables are going to be linked based on this field. And if I have it set as auto number in the previous table, make sure you have it set to number in this table. And then for notes, I have a text 64,000 field so my employees can type in uh, more information inside that submission or that log. 
Once you have set up all three of your tables, then you can set up your authentication based on your user table. So let me go to authentication. You're going to click on new. I already have it built, so I'm going to click on edit. And because I already built it once, you're going to get this warning message. Just feel free to disregard that. It's just to notify you that, hey, you're making changes to your authentication. I have selected my users table because that's where all the email and passwords are. I went with the custom route. You can also do express if you want. And I also have the recommended CASP authentication to validate my uh, authentication with. Down below, I have an email labeled at email and password. And when you're done, go ahead and click on create. I'm going to be able to click on save. And then once you click on create, you're going to have to give it a name. This is my name for my authentication. And once you have the foundation set up, your tables and your authentication, now you can go to data pages and you can start building all four of those data pages that you'll need for that functionality. And the first one that I'm going to want to build is my contacts. Go ahead and click on new. I'm going to click on edit. Under reports, you can choose the layout that you'd like for your report. I went out, I went with tabular. Make sure you select your contacts table because that's where all your contact information resides. Apply your style and apply your localization and then make sure you enable advanced options and parameters. And down below, you want to make sure you restrict access to this data page if you wish to pass or protect it inside your app. And make sure you apply your authentication that you created earlier to this data page. On the next screen, I have opted out to go with the search form to be able to search the data as John. And I have my three search fields selected. Let me just navigate back to our website so you can see exactly where this is happening. Going back to the home page, I'm logged in as John. Here are my three search fields for this data page. Okay, on the next screen, you can configure each one of your search fields. And then drag in all the fields that you'd like to have displayed on the results page. And what I mean by that is once you click search, you're able to see all of those results on the results page. And there is a slight modification that we're going to need to do to our results page. You're going to have to insert an HTML block. And to do that, click on this button below and insert the HTML block. You can position the block anywhere you want inside your columns. And inside that HTML block, this is very important. This is where you need to write a basic hyperlink that's going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to take us to the details page. And the second thing is going to pass that customer ID to the details page. If I refer back to my diagram, notice here is my results data page. And what we're doing with that hyperlink is we're passing that customer ID to the details page. Let me rewrite this for you so you can see how I did it. Basically write hyperlink href equals and then have your destination web page listed. For us it's details.html and a little bit of syntax is needed here to pass the parameters. So you're going to have to write question mark and name your parameter. You can name it whatever you want here. I have a name as customer ID equals sign. And then from this button, you can insert that customer ID field from your table as a string. Then go ahead and close your quotations and name your hyperlink. Call the details. Now where is this inside my results page? Well, here is my hyperlink right over here. This is the column that I have. And again, if you recall from the beginning of the video, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, you'll see that we're passing customer ID 1, we're passing customer ID 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So that's what that, customer, that's what that hyperlink accomplishes. Let me go ahead and delete that because I don't want to duplicate it. On the next screen, you can choose how many contacts you want to list per page. I have it set to 25. And then right over here, you want to make sure you disable the details page. And when you're done, go ahead and click Finish. You can preview your data page. And if you're happy with the look and feel of it, you're ready to deploy this data page to your results.html page. So click on Deploy, enable access, and copy this code. And what you want to do is deploy that and paste that code into the results 
HTML page. Okay, going back to my diagram, you're going to deploy it to this web page, that single data page. Okay, so now let's uh, let's take a look and see how the details page is built, the details data page, which is if I click on the details link, this is the data page you're going to be building next, the one on the left side. So I'm going to click on edit. Make sure from the report section that you select details. Again, it needs to be based on a contacts table. Apply your style and localization, enable both advanced options and parameters, and make sure you pass or protect your data page based on that authentication. Here it's very important that we filter data based on the predefined criteria, so make sure you have this checkbox enabled and go with the bridge and external parameters. You want to make sure you filter your details based on that field, which is cust ID from the comments table, from the contacts table. And here in the advanced tab on the very next screen, you want to make sure you receive the value or parameter as external and make sure you have it named the same way, C-U-S-T-I-D, and that the value is required. Move in all of your fields to your details page that you wish to display. And very last screen here, you can actually modify your fields on how you wish to uh, display them. I have them set to a uh, text field so I can edit my details view. And when you're done, go ahead and click Finish. And now what you need to do is deploy this data page you look at my diagram, to your details.html web page. And you can deploy it anywhere you want. I have it deployed here on the left side. So if I look at my website again, notice here is my details view on the left-hand side. Now let's see how these two data pages were built, which is the submission form and the logs uh, report. So I think the next step, let's go ahead and build a log form to submit our comments and notes. So I'm going to click on Edit. Make sure you have it selected as submission form to be able to add those entries. And this time you need to base this form based on the comments table. Uh, same thing, apply your style and localization, enable both of these checkboxes, and then make sure you apply your authentication. Move all the fields to the right from your comments table. And here it's very important that we receive the customer ID inside our submission form. So on the customer ID, let's hide that field so we don't display it. And in the advanced tab, you want to receive that parameter externally, and you want to name it the same way, which is CUSTID. And we have it hidden, so we don't actually display the customer ID. I think our employees don't need to actually see that field. Submitted by, I'm also hiding this field. And from this dropdown, you want to make sure you have it set authenticated fields, and we want to stamp the name of the employee upon submission. Okay, and just make sure this is set up the same way here on the Advanced tab. And what that means when I'm hiding the employee's name, if you look at our example, notice that my submission form, even though the employee's name is there, but we don't actually see it because it's being hidden. And when you make the submission, we can able, we're able to see the submission based on John's name. And I'm going to show you how to display that name later when we build this data page. Date submitted, we have it set to timestamp. And notes, we have it set up as a text area so users can submit more characters. On the next screen, make sure you select same form from the drop down option because we want the form to be able to refresh on its own. And when you're done, click finish. And now you're ready to deploy your third data page. So by clicking on Deploy, I have it deployed in the upper right corner of my screen. But you can deploy that data page anywhere on this, on this details.html page. It's up to you where you wish to uh, position your data pages and what you think it would be the best look. And the very last data page that we need is the comments or the history. So I'm going to click on Edit. I went with the reports and the list view. Of course, you can go with gallery or tabular depending on how you wish your comments to be laid out. Click Next. It also needs to be based on a comments table. Apply all the same configuration with the checkboxes and authentication. 
Here we need to make sure we filter the data based on predefined criteria, so make sure you have it set up this way. Again, we need to receive the customer ID. In the advanced tab, make sure you have this checkbox enabled, external parameters, and name it again the same way. It needs to be value required. Then drag in all the fields you'd like to display in the comments section. I have three fields. And here we have the submitted by, date submitted, and notes. If you look at our website, those are the three fields that I'm displaying in the comment section. Next, I'm displaying five at a time. And here I have it selected as no details page. When you're done, click finish. And now you're ready to deploy that last data page to your details.html web page. So again, the results web page has one data page deployed, but the details page.html has three data pages deployed. And let's go back to our Caspio account one more time. Notice that all four of my data pages are authenticated. Here is my contacts tabular, and we have the three data pages that are going to be deployed on the details.html page. So hopefully this uh, tutorial was easy to follow on setting up the, this workflow, having a one-to-many relationship. Again, if you get stuck at any point of the video, feel free to always refer back to the diagram or pause the video at any time. But if you do end up having any other questions or if you need assistance, feel free to give us a call at any time and somebody from Caspia will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching and enjoy building your apps.